John takes an STD test, and the test is advertised as being 99% accurate. If you have the STD, you will test positive 99% of the time, and if you do not have it, you will test negative 99% of the time. If 1% of all people have this STD and John tests positive, what is the probability of John having the disease? Now, at the start of this sort of questions, I just like to list down all the probabilities that have been mentioned. So in the first line, we have, if you have the STD, you will test positive 99% of the time. That translated to mathematical notation is just the probability of having the STD. Sorry, the probability of testing positive given that you have the STD. That's 99%. And then we also have the, the probability that we will test negative given that we don't have the STD, and that's also 99%. And we also know that 1% of all people have this STD, therefore it's just the probability of having the STD at 1%. Now, what is the question trying to ask? The question is trying to ask us this, given this new information, given that we know that John has tested positive, and given that we know the probabilities of the outcomes for this test, how does this change our prior estimate of John having the STD? Because let's think about what the prior is. Given that we don't know it, like, just forget about what we know about the test and the fact that John has test, tested positive. If we were to ask the question, what is the probability of John having the disease? That is just the probability of anyone having the disease, which is just, from what we know, 1%. So this is prior knowledge. So the new information here is the fact that John has tested positive on a test that has this described um, outcomes. So how does this new information change our estimate of John having the STD, so, or rephrasing the question in mathematical in, in a more mathematical notation, it is the probability of John having the STD given that he tested positive. So this is now our posterior, right? So we have a prior, which is just the probability of having the STD at 1%. Now we want to calculate some posterior. And this is simply a test of Bayes' theorem, which is a uh, Bayes' theorem for conditional probability stated here, the probability of A given B, event A given event B is just equal to the prior, which is the probability of A, just on its own, scaled by this fraction. And this fraction is probability of B given A, normalized or divided by the probability of B. And we, and we see that this fraction is just trying to, we are taking up some prior probability and we are scaling it by this fraction. And this will come in later in the video. So, at this point, let's think about the other probabilities that we can obtain based on what's been described to us. So, let's start with the probability that you have the STD, the prior, is 1%. So, this means that the probability of not having the STD is just 99%, right? Because by the laws of total probability, we only have two outcomes in this event space. Either we have the STD or we don't have the STD. So, two of them. So, now, given that we know... One of them has a probability of 1%, the other one is just 1 minus 1%, which is you know, 99%. So the probability of not having the STD as a prior is 99%. Next, let's think about the probability of testing positive given that we have the STD. So that's the top left here. This probability is a conditional probability. So it is conditioned on having the STD. On the, flip, on the flip side, we can also say that the probability of testing negative, given that we have the STD, is just 1, or 100% minus this value, which is just 1%, right? Because once again, laws of total probability, in this event space of having the STD, we can either test positive or we can either test negative. And these are the probabilities, and they sum up to 100% as expected. Similarly, for the event space being conditioned of not having the STD, the probability of testing negative, given that you don't have the STD, as given to us, is 99%. Therefore, the probability of testing positive, given that we don't have the STD, is just 100% minus 99%, which is just 1%. Easy. Now, so we're trying to find the probability of getting the STD, or I mean, of having the STD, given that we tested positive. Now, using Bayes' theorem, let's just expand on this a little bit. Let's just see what terms we have. So, what we have is a prior, the probability of having the STD, being scaled by this fraction here. So let's think about what we have. So we have the prior, the probability of having the STD, which is just 1%, as given to us. And on the 
numerator of the fraction, we have probability of testing positive given that we have the STD. That's just one of the outcomes described to us for the test, which is just this first line here. If you have the STD, you will test positive 99% of the time. But what's missing is this denominator here, this probability of testing negative. Now, this is just the probability of testing positive, right? So how many ways can we test positive? Now, if you follow along, you, you should agree that the probability of testing positive is simply the sum of the probabilities of testing positive and having the STD plus the probability of testing positive and not having the STD, right? There are, there are only two ways that we can test positive here. Either we test positive while we're not having the STD and we're testing positive while we're having the STD. So these are, those are the only two outcomes. Now, describing that in more mathematical notation, it's a probability of testing negative intersected with the probability of uh, uh, having the STD. So these two events, we intersect them, right? And then plus the probability of testing positive and or the intersection of not having the STD. And once again, we can just expand this again into two more terms. The probability of testing positive intersected with the probability, uh, the probability of testing positive intersected with having the STD is simply decomposed into the probability of testing positive given that we have the STD. So that's a conditional probability on this term here multiplied by the probability of having the STD, which is just our prior, and similarly for the second term. And those of, and those of, and those of you who don't understand this, this is simply just the law of conditional probability as seen above here. So shifting some terms about, we can see that A intersect B is just equals to this term here, which is what we have done. Now, if you take a look, if you take a look at the terms that we have here, you will realize we have all these probabilities. This is what we covered at the very beginning, all these terms at the top that we found. So simply plugging in the values that we have, we can see that the probability of testing positive is 0 0.0198. Plugging it back into our base, uh, our base equation here, we can see that our answer is 0 0.5. So the probability, the probability of having the STD, given that we tested positive on this test, is 0.5 or 50%. Great, you have the answer, all right? 0.5, 50%. So this is our posterior. So our new information represented by this fraction here has now scaled or augmented our prior, which is this, which is the 1%. It has now become 0.5%, I mean 0.5, 50%, great. However, at this point, your interviewer might then ask you, does this number make sense? Does this 50% make sense? Why and why not? So this is where it's important to understand the sort of the intuition behind what Bayes' theorem is trying to do. So let's think about it. We started with a prior, the probability of just having the STD, not knowing anything else, just 1%, right? This is 1% chance based on uh, some prior knowledge. Then we have some event that happens, some, some outcome, some new information, right? We did the test. And then our posterior, this conditional probability, con the probability of having the STD condition on the results that this new information that we have, which is testing positive, is now 50%. So why has it jumped from 1% to 50%? So our, our, our estimate of John having the STD has increased from 1% to 50%. It's, it's, it's quite a large jump. But if you think about it, starting out at 1%, the fact that John tested positive should support and you know, increase our estimate of him having the STD. Now, then you might ask, why is it just not 100%? You know, why, why doesn't it just jump? Why, why is it after one test that he tested positive? Why can't we just say, oh, he's 100%? It, we are 100% sure that he has the STD. Why? Because we know that the test can still fail. It can still give a false positive. Therefore, even though he did test positive on the test and it is 99% accurate and there's a really high level of accuracy, we still cannot be 100% sure that he has the STD, right? Therefore, it, is, it represents a large jump because the test is so accurate. So the fact that he tested positive on one test strongly supports the fact that he, has, that he likely has the STD. Therefore, the prior goes from 1% to 50% as the posterior. It increases. 
and you can calculate the same thing if you if you take the if you take the prior as the probability of not having the STD, right? So let's say we don't know any new information. The prior of not having the STD is 99%, right? Because only 1% of people in the population have the STD, therefore not having it is 99%. Now, given this new information, we can say that the, pos the probability of, having, of not having the STD, given that we test a positive, is 50%. So this is a drop from 99% to 50%. And why is it a drop? Because there's a high chance, 99% chance, before any form of testing, that the guy, John, does not have the STD. But the fact that he tests positive should tell you something, right? He tests positive on a test that is 99% accurate. So this should at least decrease our estimate of whether John has the STD. It doesn't go to zero because we know that there's a chance that there are false negative, that, that there are false uh, positives. But the fact that he is testing positive should decrease our, 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 our confidence, you know, our, yeah, our estimate of him having the, S, the, the, the STD. Therefore, it drops from 99% to 50%. So it's important to think about what, this, what Bayes' theorem is doing. So we're taking, going back to the front again, we can see that Bayes' theorem is simply taking the prior and then scaling it by some fraction. And this fraction represents the effect of the new information. So we're taking new information, using it to scale our prior to obtain some posterior estimate of the probabilities of certain events. So it's important to understand this intuition because this is something that I have been asked before in my interviews and is something that you will find as a common interview question, right? As a follow-up question. So with that in mind, this question is actually taken from a Joma Tech video. So Joma Tech, um, I'll link in the description below. This actually comes from his data science, um, well, one of his videos about data science. And this comes from the math says technical portion of the interview. And I know even though it's a different job role, you will find that the overlaps between the data scientists and the quant technical interviews are very similar because of course the skills has a large overlap. So shout out to Joma Tech. I will link the I will provide a link to the video below. And that's all for this video. Don't forget to, don't forget to subscribe and like and comment for more videos. Thank you.